Collaboration with people outside of your business is one of the greatest advantages of using Microsoft 365 and Teams. But I see so many businesses get this wrong and so many businesses setting it up without a second thought for security. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it right. But before we start, a quick introduction as always. My name is Jonathan Edwards from Integral IT. My company helps businesses all over the world with their Microsoft 365 and their cybersecurity. So if your business is using Microsoft Teams for internal collaboration and you've got your files and folders in SharePoint and OneDrive, it's only natural at some point you might want to share this data with people in other businesses. For example, we've got a client who approached us a couple of weeks ago and they want to do exactly that. They work closely with one of their customers and they want the customer to have access to a team in Microsoft Teams and also have access to some SharePoint data. But of course, they want to do it securely. Now, there are two ways that you can grant access to your Microsoft 365 to outside people. Firstly, you can set up external access or secondly, you can set up guest access. Now these two types of access are very different and to help you understand the different features, let's have a little analogy. External access is a little bit like chatting to your friendly neighbor over the fence. Guest access on the other hand, takes things a step further. It's a little bit like inviting your friendly neighbor around for a barbecue or a dinner party and letting your neighbor use your downstairs toilet. So with external access, you can chat to people outside of your organization within your Microsoft Teams. It's really handy. But guest access takes things a little bit further. With guest access, you can give people outside of your organization access to some of your Teams and channels within Microsoft Teams. You can also give people access to some files and folders within some of your SharePoint sites whilst maintaining the compliance and security of your organization. Sounds pretty good, eh? Now, rather than me stand here all day talking about external access and guest access, the best thing is that I jump onto the computer behind me and show you exactly how it works. So with Microsoft 365 guest access and external sharing, there's a few settings that you need to check across a few Microsoft 365 admin centers. Typically, Microsoft don't always make it straightforward. The first thing you need to do is log into portal.office.com with a global admin account. Now you can see I've got an admin account here because I've got access to this admin tab here. So I'll launch that. Now what I'm gonna do now is just go to here and I'll click on show all. That will show me all of my options. Now down at the bottom, there's some admin centers. So the first admin center that I want to look at is called Identity. Now this used to be called Azure Active Directory. Once we're in here, you've got all these headings, I'll just minimize that. And what we want is Identity. We want External Identities and we want Overview. Once we're in there, we want to click on External Collaboration Settings. Now, this section here is the one I want you to focus on just now. It's called Guest Invite Settings. And we've got four options. The top one is called Most Inclusive. For me, that is the least secure. So that basically says that anyone in our business can invite guests, including guests. So we could have a guest who can invite a guest. That's not secure enough for me. And the bottom one is the most secure. So basically says that no one in our organization can invite guests, including admins. And the two in the middle are kind of a mix up of them both. The one that I'm comfortable with, and all will become clear later in the video, is only users assigned to a specific admin role can invite guests. So choose that one. Now the default is this top one here. So it's the least secure. So I'm gonna go with that one. Once you're happy, you'll click on save. I don't need to because that was the setting before and then I'm gonna leave this admin center. The next admin center I want to check the settings of is the Teams admin center. So I'll launch that now. So once I'm in there, I will go to users, and then we've got a couple of options. So we've got the external access, 
that's the one we discussed earlier. That's a little bit like speaking in a friendly way to your neighbor over the fence. There's not many settings here. There's allow all external domains and you can block others and you can allow specific ones. That's generally it for external access. But the rest of this video, we're gonna be concentrating on guest access. So we'll click into here. Now this tenant is a new tenant. It's just a test tenant that I'm using to show this video. You can see the default is that guest access in Teams is switched on. But what you've also got is some more options. So you might say, well, yes, we allow guests, but there's certain things that we don't want guests to do. For example, we might not let them screen share. That might be not enabled. Or for example, we might not want them to delete chat messages. So there's a few options that you can choose just to tailor the experience that guests have in your organization. And once we're happy with that, we'll close that one. Now the third admin center we're gonna look at is the SharePoint one. Now in case you didn't know, when you create a team in Microsoft Teams, a SharePoint site is automatically created. So just looking at a couple of areas here, if we go to policies and sharing. So again, these are default settings. So at the moment, right out of the box, content can be shared with anyone. That is the setting. So you can, someone in your business can share your content with anyone. Again, I don't think that is secure enough and we've got right down the scale here to only people in your organization. So you can say by default, SharePoint, we can only share within our organization. And that you've got a SharePoint option and a OneDrive option. I'm happy with this setting here. So new and existing guests, okay? And once we scroll down here, there's a few more settings here we can choose. So when you're sharing a file and folder, what is the default setting? And the default setting here is only people in your organization. When we're happy with that, we'll click on save. Now this is for the entire SharePoint. Again, when we go into the active sites, we can go into each site and change that accordingly. So we can be really granular with our permissions. But I just wanted you to make you aware of this setting here. Okay, so we'll close out of that. Now there's some more settings within this admin center here. If we go to org settings, so settings, org settings, and we go to groups, there's some settings here that are switched off. Okay, these are not selected at the moment. But what I'm gonna do now is show you some real life how things work within Microsoft 365 and sharing. So let me just go back to the tenant and I'll click on my users here and we'll look at the active users. So we've got myself and I'm an admin, so I've got an admin here. We've got Rishi Sunak, who is an internal user and he's got a license. And we've also got Jeremy Hunt, who's got, who's got this funny um, username here. You can see in, in block capitals, it says EXT, that, that stands for external. They've not got a license. So Jeremy Hunt is actually a guest user. And I know that because of his username, but if I go to users, guest users, you can see that Jeremy Hunt is listed there with his external email address. So next, we're gonna hop over to Rishi Sunak's Microsoft Teams. So I've got that open here. You can see this is Rishi Sunak. So I'll open his Microsoft Teams. So Rishi is the owner of a team called Government Finance. There's different channels in there. So what you can do, if we just click on these three little dots here and we go to Manage Team, so you can see that Rish is actually the owner of this team and that there are no members or guests. So if he wants to add a guest or a member to this team, he can do one of two things. He can click on these three buttons and click on add member, or he can simply click on here. So he wants to add Jeremy Hunt to this team. So we'll start typing his name. And um, what I will say is we didn't find any matches. What that really means is Rishi doesn't have permissions to add people to this team. So how do we give Rishi those permissions? Well, we'll just close out of there and we'll go back to our 365 admin portal here. And then we'll go to here, and we'll go to settings and we'll go to org settings. And then we'll scroll down to Microsoft 365 groups and we'll look at the settings in here. So you can see here, you can choose how guests from outside your organization can collaborate with users in your 365 groups. The first one here, look, let group owners add people outside your organization. So at the moment, this isn't ticked. And that is why Rishi is unable to add Jeremy to his team. So we'll click on there. 
And also we've got another setting here and it's let group guest members access your group content. So we want to click that one as well. There's another little tab come up here, look, and it says users can only add guests who are already in the directory to Microsoft 365 groups. We're going to tackle that topic in just a few moments. I'm going to click on save here. Now that has saved. Now we might just have to wait a few minutes for that setting to take effect. So I've left that for about 10 minutes or so. So let's hop back to Rishi's teams now. And I'm going to try and add a member again. So I want to add Jeremy. And you can see that now Jeremy appears, okay, because we've given permission for that to happen. Now I can click on add. And Jeremy has been added to that group, okay? And you can see that is listed now in this group here. But what do we do if we want Rishi Sunak to be able to invite guests to our team who are already guests in our Microsoft 365? So let's hop back again to the admin portal, okay? I will go to org settings, org settings, which brings me to this screen here. But along the top here, I will now go to security and privacy. And there's an option here called sharing, okay? Now there's a checkbox here. When this setting is selected, all users can add people outside the organization as guests. So that is the setting that we would choose. Now, let's just talk for a moment about business process. This is a topic of conversation that I often have with our customers. We can make it really secure and say that only the IT department can add guests to our Microsoft 365. That is a sensible solution and it ensures a bit more security. But some users don't like that. They think that's a little bit restrictive. They think it's going to take too long. They want to add a guest to Microsoft 365. They've got to contact the IT department, maybe log a ticket, and they want to be able to do it themselves. So the other option is we can tick this button here and say, let users add guests to the organization. Now, this is much less secure because what we're saying is users can add guests as they want to add them. So you've got two sides of the coin here. But there's another solution, which could be a good middle ground, okay? So we can leave this unchecked. But what we can do, because it says, at the moment, only admins can add guests to our Microsoft 365. So what we could do is go to users and say, well, we trust Rishi, and Rishi is like a power user within the business. So rather than make Rishi come to us when he wants us to add a guest to Microsoft 365, we want Rishi to be able to do this himself. So we could choose just a couple of users in our business. What I could do then is go on to Rishi and we could go down to roles and it says here, manage roles. And we want to give him some kind of admin access. Now, don't be alarmed by this. There are lots of different types of admin access. We're not going to touch any of these because these are like global admin. But if we click on here, show by show all by category, and then we can scroll right down here, and where it says identity, we've got a role called guest inviter. Now, I'm sure you can guess what this role does. So if we make Rishi a guest inviter, it means that he can invite guests to Microsoft 365. So that is a, a nice way around to do it. It eases the burden on IT and it gives people a little bit more responsibility, but without giving everyone permissions to invite guests. Now let's talk about the guest user experience and also adding a little bit of extra security when you're inviting guests to your organization. Okay, so let's pop over again to, to Rishi's teams. Now we're going to add another member. Okay, so I'll type the email address in here. Okay, you can see straight away it's allowing us to add this testoutlook.com account because Rishi now has the guest inviter role. So I can do that and I can click on add. Now it says this person has been added. So I'll click on close. Now let's hop over to the Outlook account that I've just added. So it's the Integral IT Licensing. It's just a, an account we use internally. So I'll go over to there. You can see that we've got an email. And if I'll just launch that. You can see it says Rishi has added you to a guest of Microsoft 365 test in the government finance. So if I click on open teams, click use the web app and Microsoft teams launches. Now you can see here, there was a few 
hidden channels. We can't access these at the moment. So that's just another feature I can show you. So if I just go back to Rush's teams again, if we go into channels and you can see here, these teams show for me, show for members. So we can just simply click on all these, click on that and confirm that. And that'll give him access to them all. But you can see here, we've not now got access to Microsoft Teams. But what you probably saw there is it was quite easy for this external guest user to access our Microsoft Teams. I believe you need to put a little bit more security into it. So I'm a big fan of creating a policy that means that all external guest users need to enable multi-factor authentication. It just protects our data a little bit more. So how do you do that so it's automatic and you don't have to worry about it? Well, let's go back to our 365 admin now. And that is here. What we'll do is we need to go down to admin centers, identity. And once that launches, we go to identity, protection, and we want conditional access. So we're gonna create a conditional access policy. And there's a couple of ways to create conditional access policies. I've covered these in a previous video. You can create one from scratch and configure it yourself, or Microsoft have created some policy templates that you can just use. So let's, let's go with the easy option today. You can check out my other video on conditional access when you've got a moment. So we'll click on here. Now we've got lots of different conditional access policies that we can use. I've just clicked on all, and you can see this one has appeared here require multi-factor authentication for guest access. That is the one we want. So we'll highlight that, we'll click on next. Now all conditional access policies at the start, they are in a state of report only. This is just a test, so I'm not gonna do any damage here. So I'm gonna switch this on. You can rename it if you want. And this just summarizes the policy. So it included users, all guests and external users, we want to have multi-factor authentication, okay? Once we're happy with that, we'll click on Create, and that successfully created our multi-factor authentication. Now let's go back to our um, email here. So we've got Teams here. Okay, let's try and get into Teams once again, okay? So now it's asking us to sign in again, and now it's coming up and saying more information is required. So it's asking us now to set up multi-factor authentication. If I click on next, and now it's taking me through the multi-factor authentication process. So our policy is kicked in. Now I won't go through this, but the next time it does ask me to log into Teams, I'll always have to enter a multi-factor authentication code. So this is the way to provide guest access in a secure way. So I hope you found this video useful. So many people give guest access and external access to their Microsoft 365 and their Microsoft Teams without thinking about security. Don't do that. I look forward to seeing you again soon.